All right, guys, what's happening? This is Ryan. As some of you have found out I'm um, kind of doing a couple different things. I've always kind of been the guy that, you know, is kind of like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And I want to continue to keep, you know, talking about my aquarium journey because it is it is a big part of my life. And anybody who has an aquarium or saltwater aquarium, I mean, there's just something so special, right, about like, well, it's a bad example at the moment. We'll, we'll get into that here in a minute, but you're creating an ecosystem that is just completely dependent upon you to survive. You know, we, we make beautiful things come to life. I mean, we take a piece of a saltwater world, whether it just be fish or corals or whatever the case may be, and we turn it into something that most of the time looks pretty awesome. Um, now what you see behind me is not exactly awesome. And let's be honest, I could have cleaned this completely up so that you could have seen, you know, the best version of it and so on and so forth, but that's not reality. I mean, some people stay on top of this stuff all the time, but the majority of us have a lot of other things going on. And sometimes you end up with this and I'm not proud of it, you know, but you can see there's, um, cyanobacteria all over the place. I wanna to try to get that taken care of. A couple of things. Um, one, the first thing I always do whenever I'm gonna do any type of cleaning is I turn all the flow off to the tank because if I'm gonna scrape stuff or do anything with the tank and then I'm gonna do a water change, I want all that stuff to kind of fall to the bottom. Let's talk about some stuff you're gonna need. Um, for cyanobacteria, I highly recommend a turkey baster. If it's loose enough, you can actually press in on it and then suck it in here and then you can just drop it into your waste bucket or wherever you want. Cause you're gonna change water anyway. You might as well try to suck out some cyano with it as well. Um, I also try to use like a, just a standard fish net and I try to operate like with these kind of close to each other. So what I can't suck up, I'm trying to like scoop up with the fish net to remove as much as you possibly can for the water change, you know, just have a basic gravel suction filter. I actually have two brew containers. One is for the bad water, one is for the good water. Um, and then I have one of these little pumps uh, with some tubing I just got from Amazon. I think they were like 12 bucks. The only other thing I'm gonna grab is a um, scraper. Now with these bio cubes, um, if you have one, you know this, but these, edges are curved right here. So that presents a unique problem. Um, they do sell like these little magnets uh, from Coral Life that have like a little bit of an edge on them. And they're supposed to be for that corner, but it's really, it's really kind of hit or miss. That was pretty clever. It's like, cause sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. And you know, what I find is I got one of these, uh, algae cleaning pads from like bulk reef supply i think you get like two of them for five bucks or six bucks and uh, i just cut them uh, in half and then i use these for the corners and any difficult spots i i can't really get to let me get you a little bit closer and then you can kind of see kind of my process and then i'll try to speed it up for you another thing that you should have if you don't is one of these things <laughs> it's an algae scraper i think kent makes it um you can buy blades that are uh, interchangeable. What we're going to try to do is just suck this up. Sometimes try to pick it up. Other times, maybe on top of green hair algae that you need to pick out too. how well you can see that, but there's quite a bit of cyanobacteria.
next step is to siphon out the the gravel. Here is the finished product. You can see that water is super nasty. This is what water is supposed to look like. All right, so this is the last step. You can see I got my uh, tube hooked up to the top of the tank there. There's a pump in the bottom of the bucket I just showed you. All I gotta do is plug it in and this puppy will fill itself up on its own. Just about done, but there's a couple things that you have to do left. I mean, I haven't turned the power on or anything because I wanna show you what's behind the hood, or that is what's called an in-tank media basket. I highly recommend one if you get a BioCube uh, 29 or 32, they make them for both. A couple things that I do definitely recommend, if you're gonna do like mechanical filtration, definitely get felt. Don't get, I've gotten ones that are not as dense and they don't do a very good job of filtering out the stuff. So I think that's where part of my problem was. And the only thing I run is felt in two layers, which I change occasionally. And then in the bottom there, there's just GFO and carbon. So I'm gonna change that out and then we'll get everything fired back up. This is Bulb Reef Supply, uh, premium ROX 0.8 carbon. Uh, the instructions say one tablespoon per 10 gallons. So 30 gallon, three tablespoons. This is BRS Bulk. GFO, um, and this is one tablespoon per four, four gallons. So I just go to 28 gallons. So what I do is it just kind of mix it up a little bit. You definitely don't want it all to be, you know, like layered like that because then the GFO will just turn into like a concrete brick and then, you know, nothing will flow through it. So just put it in a different bowl, shake it up a little bit. There you have it. And then that's what goes in the bottom of the of the media um, now you know you can you can tie this off or I'll use zip ties sometimes just because it's a little bit easier but then definitely make sure you rinse this out first because you don't want you know rust or GFO it's the same thing just to go all throughout your tank that would not be a good look wanted to show you the in tank media basket you know it just has uh, different chambers it also has removable uh, plates that you can take in and out if you want different heights or want to do different types of filtration but the beauty of this is is that it comes with a little plate that goes on here and then water from your first chamber overflows into here and then it, it can't get out it goes straight down here through both areas the filtration I have set up and then ultimately hits the carbon and GFO before it comes out the bottom and then it continues its journey it's almost like an advanced filter sock with layers if you can tell already it's looking pretty good in there 